up will be Greg Daniels. Then yeah. yeah. we have another executive producer, Mr. David Jenkins. Come on, we're gonna doubt that. Because <laughs> I'm a real prick to work for. And uh, then they brought me the script, uh, David Jenkins' script. And I read it, and I said, this is the, my favorite script that I've read in memory. And uh, I, I really love this script, I love this idea, it's, such, it's so fantastic. And then we thought, the problem is, often you have a great script, and then it's very hard to get all the stars to align, uh, and then enter Greg Daniels, uh, who uh, my original, we were writing partners, we started out in the business together, uh, he's gone on to the, he's, he's a genius, and he loved the script, and Greg, I think you should take it from there. Mr. Genius. Yeah, no, I, I was so impressed with the world that David created, you know. I'm dropping my kids off at school, but in, also in, in my work, and this is, you know, Greg, um, has such a great um, history with really grounded and, and relatable human being comedy, and I love that it was in this kind of outrageous setting. And I also s super believe in um, extraterrestrial life, so I was kind of excited to be able to say that in, in like panels and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not gonna come back to bite you. Yeah. <laughs> a supportive group, I feel supportive. Well, I just want to say, by the way, uh, uh, and yes, it is a fantastic group, amazing group of people. Um, uh, I was actually working on a, a, another show for Warner Brothers, the people who make this show, and uh, at one point we had a joke about reptilian aliens uh, anal probing people, and they said, oh, you can't do that uh, because uh, we're doing uh, people from Earth. And, uh, and I said, oh, uh, so it's, it involves reptilians and anal probes? And they said, yes, apparently they're under the impression you guys own anal probing. Yeah, was, the original title was Anal Probe. Yeah. That's where they got a lot of blowback yeah. from just about everybody. Yeah. 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 Even uh, when it shifts to the show about a garage, it's a garage that just does anal probes. That's right. Yeah. yeah. The show's called Anal Probe Garage. That's yeah. Right. yeah. That's right. So this show can pretty much go in any direction now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we have licensed and we own the cool concept of anal probing. Yeah. <laughs> but who did come up with it? Because this wasn't originally called this. It was. It did have a different title. Uh, it was called The Group originally. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, but who came up with People from Earth? Because I love, or People of Earth. People of Earth, Earth was David Kissinger's yep. idea. Way to exactly. go. And we couldn't get the group um, as a title that was kind of a surprise to us, so we panicked. And we had, we had three days to come up with the title, and David Kissinger recommended it. And then uh, I Googled it, and the first thing that comes up is uh, your letter after leaving NBC. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, it's funny, I didn't even make that connection, and then someone explained that to me later on, so that's a total, uh, yeah, yeah, total mix up. I, thought I, it was, I assumed it was you. No, it was not, it was not me, I, no. I actually thought it was kind of cool when that happened, because I liked the title, and then Googling it and seeing that, and it's, it's a very uh, optimistic letter, and there's something cool about what you do, because you're very genuine and earnest when you're not being a, a megalomaniac person. <laughs> um, I, 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 I like uh, what that says about uh, your style of comedy and Greg's style of comedy, and um, really both of your style of comedy. It's very intellectual, it's very smart, but it's also very warm and it's very sincere. So I thought that was a good omen for the title of the show. And you know, there's been this nice side benefit too, which is I, I knew Anna, but I didn't really know Wyatt. I was a, a big admirer, but I didn't know him. And since we started this project, we've been hanging out. Yes. And uh, he is incredible. He's such an incredible person. He's very great. He really is. He's great. He is. What's that? Can I hang out with you more? He's mine! Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's only so much time. Uh, wait. Um, no, and uh, yeah, I think that's been... It, it is, I think, one of the great gifts in, in show business is when you can rig things so that you're working with a group of people that you're just incredibly happy, you're inspired by them, it's a project you really like, and these are people I just want to hang out and have dinner with. That is a gift. And then uh, the idea that it can actually be some part of some kind of venture, some kind of business venture, and I assume hundreds of billions of dollars will be generated, uh, that's, that's a nice thing to add on top. It's a cherry on top, absolutely. Yeah. Now, Wyatt, this is your first lead in a show? It is, yes. Uh, now, are you... Uh, yeah, it's about time. It's about time. Because you have a, a, 
a world-class deadpan, man. That is a Buster Keaton deadpan. That is... It's... I can't take full credit for it. It's really... A lot of it is just that I don't sleep. <laughs> the secret to most good comedy. Yeah. You're sleep deprived. I'm so tired. Please, let me sleep, Mr. O'Brien. No, there's no time for that. Please. People enjoy you when you're tired. Oh, Drink no. more Red Bull and do as you're told. <laughs> well, uh, and Anna, actually, and I had met doing uh, Lady Dynamite. I don't know if you guys have seen that show. But if you haven't, you must. Well, thanks for the plug. It's on a totally different network, too. Yeah, see? Everybody's happy with me at this moment. Everybody. Could everyone delete that plug from their iPhone? There's an app that does that. <laughs> now, this show is on TBS. Uh, are you enjoying work for TBS? You bet I enjoy working for TBS. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, uh, all joking aside, it has been a dream come true. I've, I think I've been there, uh, I want to say I've been there like seven years now, and it has been an absolute dream. They, anytime I ask for anything, they say yes, and what else can we do? They let us have total creative freedom, and it's been one of the, it's the best working experience I've had in my life, so. Well, it shows. This is, this show is fantastic. Um, we want to thank you guys so much for coming. Hey, can we have a hand for this gentleman right here? Who's yeah. Right? Is that your? That's me. <laughs> so you're playing an IT uh, a guy named Ron. Yeah, it's a real scratch for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ben, I want to say. Well, if oh. Flash was there, you just didn't see him, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go. The Invisible Jet. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. Um, yeah. Well, no. Charm City is like a heretofore unseen city in the DC universe. It's another way of saying it's brand new. Um, and uh, we have our own little heroes. You know, we have uh, Crimson Fox, we have Jack-O-Lantern, and a few other surprises that'll come along. But we like that we're our own sort of underdog city in the DCU, you know? Well, Vanessa, let's talk about your character. She may not be a superhero, but she does kick some ass. She's got balls! <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what drew you to this in uh, doing a half-hour comedy like this? It's really cool. I like owe it. I feel like such an underdog because everyone here is so funny. They're so like, don't you think they're hysterical? But yeah, no. I mean, I feel so so blessed to be a part of something when I'm surrounded by such amazing people to work with. But I I love it. Just watching it back, it makes me so proud and so excited. I. Can't wait to see where the rest of the show goes. Yeah, plus the, the live musical episode of Powerless is going to be fantastic. I know. <laughs> so, Danny, Danny Pudi, let's uh, talk about this new character and how would the obvious question, of course, how does he compare to Abed? He's, he's a little more grounded. He's, he's still a little socially awkward, but not obviously as, as much as Abed. Yeah, uh, first of all, hi everyone, so good to see you all. Uh, 
I think there's a couple differences here. Um, one, there is a uh, moment in the episode where Teddy doesn't know what to say, um, which I think is interesting because I think Abed is would have had something to say uh, at any given moment. It's nice to play a character that's a little bit closer to my intelligence level. Um, <laughs> I think uh, Abed and Teddy would share the origami animal making craft together. I think that'd be fun for them. But overall, he's much more normal. You know, I think for me, it's, it's kind of like where I'm at in my life because I've got kids and I'm trying to raise them. I don't know what I'm doing. And it's kind of like, this is, this is Teddy, like a boy trying to become a man. So that's kind of where he's at. That being said, he's also like searching for Batman, just like everybody else. <laughs> Alan, you're also here for Con Man, so you're sort of the captain of uh, Con Man. <laughs> I mean, he's obviously a little bit of a douche. Uh, can he be redeemed, or, uh... <laughs> Did you say he's a douche? A little bit. A little bit. Uh, he's a lot. He's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call him a douche, though. I'd call him a tool. I think... Okay, okay. <laughs> Tool's fair. Tool's fair. He's more, yeah, he's more of a tool. Um, he's a lot of fun, you know? He does... He's an idiot. Um, uh, he does, he, he's come to be a boss and doesn't know how to boss. Uh, he, he has ideas about being a boss, obviously. And, uh, he doesn't understand social norms, it seems like. He he's, uh, doesn't understand boundaries. And any character that has that, is, speaking of social norms and uh, boundaries, uh, Ahmed was kind of that, right? Oh, yeah. So basically he's Ahmed. Been there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Ron, Ron, talk about joining the show and uh, sort of uh, how are we going to see you? How are you going to be introduced? Okay. I mean, I was on another show called Undateable, but then it <laughs> Where were you when we needed ratings, though? <laughs> So I was kind of just going out and doing a lot of stand-up, and then I had a meeting with these fine gentlemen, and they let me watch the pilot, and they just basically asked me if there was anything that I would like to do that I thought was maybe missing from the show, and I came up with an idea for my character, who's kind of, where their character's a little bit more jaded about the everyday going on with superheroes. My character is still new for him, fresh for him. He's excited about it, and I think... It was something that they already had an idea for, and it just kind of meshed up. And I was like, I like money, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving us the hook. Michael, real quick though, before we go, I just want to ask about the hook.